Tony Enthusiast, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. Today we're back on the racing green and I'm getting all the components ready to refit the subframe. So in today's video, I'm gonna be refurbishing the top suspension arms, removing the old needle roller bearings and fitting new ones in there with a pin. There is a knack to doing this. It's quite easy to damage these needle roller bearings when you refit them and it can be quite difficult to get the old ones out. So if you wanna see how I do it, give you a bit of best practice, then stay tuned and watch the video because we're gonna do the whole lot from start to finish. Um, I thought I'd also mention as well, so while checking what components I need to refurbish to put the subframe together, I realized I hadn't got a set of high lows. Uh, not quite sure, but I hadn't ordered a set. So I went on mini spares and I went to order a set of mini spares high lows with knuckles and it come to 126 pounds with postage. So that was the front and rear set and a set of four knuckles as well. I don't know why the high low sets come with just the plastic cup for the knuckles without the actual knuckle itself. You need the whole knuckle really. There's no point just replacing the plastic cups. So the only difference was those knuckles were the ones with the neoprene rubber bushes, which are meant to last a little bit longer. But anyway, with the postage, 126 pounds. Uh, now I'm trying to be a bit more conscious with the racing green because I've spent a lot of money on it I will go through a video at some point and give you a bit of an update But I think we're approaching nearly ten thousand pounds. I spent on the car now I've got most of the stuff to put it all back together with most of the Bodywork and everything like that is done, but 126 pounds still a lot of money in the budget So before I hit the button to order I thought I would just have a look on eBay and I found a full car set with knuckles for 63 quid, which is uh, basically half the price. Now, I took a little bit of a leap, leap of faith because obviously you don't know what the quality is like and that sort of thing. And please let me know in the comments if you think that's gonna be a problem. But I got this set on there. Who did I order them from? I can't remember. I'll put it along the text down the bottom, but quite a well-known mini retailer anyway. Um, and yeah, 63 quid, half price, full car set they look pretty good quality with me they've got the grease nipples so you can grease them up so they the uh, thread doesn't seize up inside um, they feel relatively lightweight and um, you've got the rods for the back as well um yeah half price half the price of the mini spares one so i'm not sure that the mini spares ones justify twice the price but do let me know if these are a problem for any reason. To be honest, they look very, very similar to every other set of high lows I've had before. Um, the only thing that I noticed with high lows is the mini sport ones have bigger uh, pins on the knuckles, so you have to get the right knuckles for the mini sport ones. Uh, but aside from that, I thought they're pretty much much of a muchness. There were sets on there that were even cheaper than 63 quid. Um, but like I say, I do recognize the retailer selling these. Um, so yeah, we're gonna need them at some point as well. But anyway, let me stop waffling on. Let's get these arms cleaned up, refurbished and rebuilt, and I'll show you how I do it. And just quickly, before I get forget, just one quick bit of advice from me. These uh, knuckles, the rubber on them, tends to perish within a year or two. So it is worth investing in a pot of proper rubber grease and then all I do so I've got some uh, Granville red rubber grease here all I do and I've done this for a few years now whenever I fit them I just smear a light coating of rubber grease on uh, the actual rubber boot itself and that I haven't seen them split since I've been doing that so it may work it may not work but I think it just gives a bit of extra protection maybe and i won't waffle on much more but i've just fitted the rubber donut on there as well just to make sure it all fits really nicely so i don't think we'll have an issue using these high lows on the car they look perfectly okay to me right then i need to start getting these components refurbished ready to go back onto the subframe it's been sorting out my bits again i can't believe actually i don't have a set of high lows i don't i've not ordered a set Maybe I thought the car had high lows on it, but it hasn't. So 
I could put the original trumpets back on but it just makes it a pain when you want to adjust it so I'm probably going to need to order a set of high lows for the car. First thing we're going to do in today's video we're going to refurbish these top arms. So I'll set the camera up. The first thing we do is just clean all this crud off. It's quite thick in crud. Um, we need to get the knuckle cut out. We're going to refurbish both. So we take the pins out. One of these, uh, these are seized in both sides. That's not uncommon that. So probably maybe a little bit of heat and tap it through or maybe just a bit of penetrating oil. And then I'll show you how we're going to replace the bearings. So I haven't got any super duper special tools for this. We're just going to use a Dremel and then I'm going to paint them. I would usually paint in Hammerite, but I went to Halfords and maybe Hammerite have upset them because they don't do Hammerite anymore. They do Nitromores, um, and looking at it, this is very much similar to Hammerite. It's satin black, um, it's uh, anti rust paint, direct to metal, um, it resists salt spray for up to in excess of 250 hours. So that must offer fantastic corrosion protection. Um, I thought I've got gloss black anyway, but satin black will be fine. Um, and yeah, I'll use that for doing the radius arms, the top arms and things like that. I'll let you know how it goes. I wasn't a massive fan of Hammerite. Hammerite's all right, it's pretty tough, but if you apply it in low temperature conditions, it does take forever to dry. So first thing is getting these arms cleaned up. Right, so we need to get this bearing out here. As you can see, it's a needle roller bearing. Um, you can't poke down inside and get the back of the bearing to push it through. You can get a tool for doing these, although I don't, I don't have it. It's probably not very expensive, just like a, a, a bearing puller. Um, but what I do, first thing you need to do is get rid of all the needle rollers. So as you can see, I just cut down the side there with a carbide bit on the Dremel. Get all the needle rollers out. The next bit is I will just go along with a carbide bit and I'll just make that shell really, really thin there. Uh, and you get it to a point where it's so thin that when you 
tap it, it will crack and come out. So I'll do that now. So there we go. That's our, the race of that bearing out. As you can see, I just thinned it probably a little bit too far actually. I went through it. But you just need to thin it down. You get it quite thin, you just give it a tap and it will usually crack. Uh, I'll just mark slightly the inside of that, but that, that doesn't matter. You've really got to go to town before you damage it. Obviously, we'll press a new bearing in there. Um, but yeah, that's all you do. I'll do the other side quickly on camera. So that side was pretty much perfect as you can see I didn't cut all the way through uh, literally just made it nice and thin and then you just strike it on the corner and it will crack it'll crack through and then that allows you to get it out so um, so yeah inside that's this side isn't it inside that oh there's a tiny little bit picked up there but it really makes no difference at all um, I need to get these arms cleaned up in some brake cleaner in a moment, we're just gonna do the same on the other one. Oh, it's still a bit warm, that one. Let me get these bearings out and then we'll get them cleaned up. Right, so there's our arms. Uh, we've wire wheeled them back now to get off any loose rust. Um, make sure to do inside the cups. I've also run a drill bit through the bolt holes to make sure they're clear nice wire brush up inside where the pin goes and then finally just make sure that the bleed nipple hole is clear and that kind of vent hole at the bottom of the cup uh, they're ready for paint now so we get a lick of that nitromore paint on and uh, see what it looks like back in a moment so there we go that's our arms painted um, it was painted with the nitromores paint um, always feels a bit odd to me because nitromores is typically a paint stripper rather than a paint um, but it goes on okay um, mm, I'm not that convinced by it it doesn't seem to with <coughs> hammerite one coat and you're done I would say maybe they look like maybe they could do two coats in places so I might do that um, once I've fitted the bushes because I want to get these fitted, the pins fitted tonight. I don't want to wait another day for the paint to dry. So we get that done. So this bit is really, really important fitting these bearings because it is so easy to damage these when you put it when we put it together. So I'll explain how I'm going to do it. Right. So there's our bits laid out. So this is the offside arm. Uh, that's towards the back of the car, that's towards the front. Uh, it's fairly straightforward really, so you've obviously got the pin, the two needle roller bearings. Uh, some differences are that the back washer is the thick washer, um, so that goes on the back of the subframe or towards the rear of the car, and the front washer is the thin washer. Um, you might also notice a difference in the bearings themselves, the needle rollers, so this is whether it's intentional or not but it slightly looks slightly more chamfered on this end of the bearing so that'll be on the inner side that we're gonna insert into the arms um might just be my eyes now it's def definitely more chamfered on one end so the more chamfered end will be the end that goes in the really really important bit is real temptation just to hammer those bearings in but trust me, you will damage the bearing cage if you do that. This, once you start tapping the outer edge of here, it um, it can damage it, it can squash it, and then the needle rollers inside don't spin round. Um, and then what will happen is the 
well, they won't act like bearings anymore. Um, and it doesn't completely seize up, but you'll feel the arm is stiff. So we need to either press these bearings in, or we're just going to use a bit of threaded bar to pull the bearings in. It's really, really tempting just to hammer them in, but trust me, I've made the mistake before. Don't do that. Either press them in in a vise, or um, use what I'm going to use, which is a bit of threaded bar. Right, so here's our piece of threaded bar. Uh, it's quite long, so I can use I use this for doing the rear radius arms as well. Um, but obviously, it's just a threaded bar, a couple of nuts on it, and then some big washers. These thick washers here are actually radius arm washers, but works a treat. So, like I say, you just got to be careful. Now we do have to. You do have to start the bearing off. So just with a rubber mallet. Like I say, you have to be very, very careful. Just, just get it started. Make sure we got the bearing orientated the right way around. So like I say, it looked like one end was slightly chamfered. And there we go we just need to wind that in now so I'll probably use a socket on this end and we'll need a spanner shouldn't have to use too much force and just wind the bearings in And we'll know when they're all the way home because the washers should butt up against the end of the top arms. And that's gone tight. If we just do a quick visual check, that bearing's flat up against the edge, that's flat up against the edge, and the proof in the pudding is when you put the arm in, it should rotate nicely. If you've bashed them over, then when you put that arm in, it'll probably seize up, bulk up, trying to get in in the first place, and then it won't rotate freely. So remember, the uh, back washer is a thick one. And the front washer is the thin one. And obviously we've got the plate on the front, which goes up against the subframe. And don't forget the rubber boots. Just like that. There we go. So one last thing to do, grease nipple. Now, this does my nut in. This really annoys me. So this kit from Mini Spares. Put new grease nipples in there, come on. How much is a grease nipple? I don't mind paying an extra 50p for a kit or a pound for a kit, but why do they not include the grease nipple? I mean, there's the old one. I'll have to clean that up, but come on. I think I might have some grease nipples somewhere, actually. I'll have a quick hunt around the workshop, but it's the same with swivels. Put enough shims in there. So, so annoying. So let me press the other bearing in quickly. And uh, we'll then see if I've got any spare grease nipples anywhere. Right, so that's both our arms done. I managed to find a new grease nipple for one side. The other side I had to clean up the old grease nipple because I didn't have a 
angled one like that. So they're ready to go, well I say on the car, on the subframe now. Must remember to grease them up. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, if it was useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to ask me a question, drop something down in the comment. I read all the comments. And if you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help. Thank you very much. Catch you again next time. Cheers.